Okay, in this video, we're going to be deriving the equation of a hyperbola, and we're going to take a look at why c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And so in case you don't remember, or maybe you don't even know it yet, the standard equation of a hyperbola is x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. All right, so let's start with a figure so that we're all talking about this the same way. So uh, this is the figure that I have. So I have two points, um, the first focus and the second focus. And a hyperbola has kind of a weird definition. It's the set of all points in the plane. So it's this branch and also this branch, where if you find the distance from the point x, y to this focus, and you find the distance from this point to this focus, if you do the absolute value of, let's say, d1 minus d2, you always get the same number. So that's the definition. We're actually going to use that to work out the equation. Um, so there's a couple of things that we need to know. Um, first, we need to remember the absolute value of d1 minus d2 is constant. The way I have it set up with this point on this branch, d1 is always actually bigger than d2. Um, so uh, d1 minus d2 will be positive, and I'm going to use that as I go through this derivation. Um, so the other thing we need to do, we're saying that if we find the difference between d1 and d2, we always get a constant, but we don't know what that constant is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the point x, y, I'm going to move it down here so that it's on the x-axis, and then uh, I'm going to calculate the distance from this point to the first focus and this point to the second focus, and then add them up. So let's do that. Okay, here's the picture. Um, so since the distance from the center, which is zero, zero, to this focus is just c units, and the distance from the center to this vertex um, is what we call a, so we're gonna go with that a units. So this line segment right here has a length of a plus c. So that's pretty clear, I think. Then we need to find this distance, but if you look at it again, the distance from the center to the focus is c, and the distance from the center to the vertex is a, so this little leftover bit here must be c, the big thing, minus a, the little thing. So this is c minus a, this is a plus c, and then what we want to do is the absolute value of d1 minus d2, which is a plus c minus the quantity c minus a, which overall is just 2a. So now we know that constant difference is going to be 2a. So going back to this, we're going to need to find d1, we're going to need to find d2, uh, we're going to subtract them, and then we're going to say that the difference is 2a. So let's, uh, let's go to the Inspire and start defining things. So to find d1 and d2, I need to find distances. So I'm going to define a distance formula so I can use it. So I'm going to say d of x comma y comma a comma b. So this is a distance formula that'll take the point x, y and the point a, b and find the distance between them. So it is equal to, so that's colon equal, so that's control and then the templates if you're on the handheld and then square root, so control and x squared, quantity x minus a squared plus quantity y minus b squared. I'm gonna press enter and it should say done. All right, so that'll find the distances for us. Now let's go back to the figure and see what distances we need to find. So the first one, d1, is from the point x, y to the point negative c, 0. Um, so let's, let's do that. I'm going to define it. I'm going to say d1 and then colon equals, and it'll be d of uh, x, y, comma, negative c, comma, 0. And we have this radical. So that's the distance. And then we also need to find d2, which is the distance from x, y to c, 0. So let's do it again. Um, I'm actually just going to take this and change the 1 to a 2, and change the negative c to a c, and press Enter. OK. So we know that d1 is bigger than d2 because of the way we've set up our figure. So I'm going to say that d1 minus d2 has to be equal to 2a. So that's kind of the definition of the hyperbola that I'm using right there. And I'm press enter. And uh, if you watch the ellipse video, you know that this thing uh, is better worked with if we take one of these radicals and move it to the other side. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do uh, d1 is equal to 2a and then uh, plus d2. So I'm just adding d2 to the other side. And now we have one radical on each side. I need to get rid of the radical, so I'm going to square. So to do that, you can actually just press the squared key. And the Inspire understands that you want to square both sides of the equation. But there might be extraneous solution, so it's going to give you a warning. So we square it. Um, let's see what this says. Operation might introduce false solutions. So it calls extraneous solutions false solutions. But that's OK. All right. Um, so we have this, which is kind of what I asked it to do, but it didn't actually expand the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use expand. So menu 3, and then option 3 is expand. I want to expand that answer right there. Um, you could also go up and paste it down, press Enter. So it doesn't seem great at first, but if you scroll through, you can see the right-hand side is no longer a quantity squared. It's um, a thing with tons of trailing terms. And what I want to do is move all these trailing terms over to the left-hand side. So everything without a radical basically ends up on the left. So to do that, I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to subtract them all from the right-hand side. So I'm going to do minus quantity. Well, I'm going to subtract them all from both sides. Uh, I went up. I pressed uh, to the right to get to the end here. I'm holding shift and pressing to the left. The emulator can't show it when I press two buttons at the same time, I think. So it's not showing it. But again, I was holding shift, which is right here. And I was pressing to the left on the trackpad. Press Enter to paste it down and press Enter. And now uh, it's starting to shape up, I guess. And here, everything has a 4. So let's just get rid of that, divide by 4. And things are looking OK. Uh, I still have a radical, so I'm going to square again. So square. And uh, it doesn't expand, so I'm going to expand again. So menu 3, 3, and paste down. And now there's just a ton of stuff. And if I was doing this on paper, I'd have to go through and find like terms and do a lot of stuff. But the Inspire is going to let me uh, do something a little easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the previous answer. So that's Control and then the negative sign. So I want the previous answer minus. I'm going to subtract from the previous answer the entire right-hand side of the previous answer. So the entire right-hand side is like all of this stuff over here. And to do that, I'm just going to type R-I-G-H-T, so right, and then of answer. So control and the negative sign. And let's press Enter, and we get this. OK, again, it didn't expand for us. So I'm going to go through and expand again. So menu 3, and option 3 is expand, the previous answer, and we get this. All right, so this if you watch the ellipse video or you work through it by hand, this is almost exactly the same process. In fact, it's kind of like eerily similar. Um, and soon we're going to run into the key difference. But I want to move everything that doesn't have a variable. So x and y are my variables. I want to move everything to the right-hand side that doesn't have that. So I'm going to do minus and a quantity. Go up here, arrow over until you're to the right of c squared. Hold shift. Press to the left, or you can just type them in. It's up to you. Right here, and press Enter. Now, if you remember, the equation that we're looking for um, is actually equal to 1. So what I'll do at this point is I will take the right-hand side here, um, and I'm going to divide everything I see by it. So I'm going to divide both sides by the right-hand side. And I can do that the same way that I moved the entire right-hand side over. I'm just going to do uh, the previous answer. So I just type divided by and then uh, the right of the answer. And it might not look nice, but at the very least, it's going to uh, make the right-hand side into a 1. So we do this, and we get 1. And that's pretty good. OK, so now I'm looking at this. And let's see what we've got. Um, OK, so I'm going to go back to my picture and see what's kind of going on here, uh, because I think there's something a little weird, right? We have an a squared minus c squared. And that, I think, is a, it's not an issue, but it's a thing. So let's go here. Let's go down here. OK. So if you look at the figure, 
in the figure in a hyperbola in general, since the focus is kind of on the outside, but the hyperbola looks like it's eating the focus, um, or maybe the focus is on the inside, depending on how you look at it. But anyway, the focus is out here. It's not between the branches. Um, the distance from the center to the focus, which is C, is always bigger uh, than the distance from the center to a vertex, which is A. So C is bigger than A. So if C is bigger than A, then um, C squared minus A squared is a positive. And if you look at this, we have A squared minus C squared. So that's actually a negative right there. So what I'm gonna do is two things. I'm going to first look at this and I'm gonna kind of divide it up like manually, which is kind of annoying. I'm gonna just delete this. And then I'm gonna just kind of like type in here, uh, a squared y, ooh, capital Y, y squared. And then over the same denominator, I'm just doing this to make it look clearer. You don't really need to do this. So let me copy. Oh, I don't think I can actually copy. I might have to type that again. That's annoying. Oh no, it worked, woo. Okay, so if we look at this, you can see that a squared minus c squared over a squared minus c squared, definitely gonna cancel. You can see that a squared over a squared is definitely gonna cancel. I don't know what'll happen if I just press enter. I think it's gonna do all kinds of algebra on this. Um, but the key thing here is that uh, these are just gonna cancel and that's fine. Here, I'm gonna actually end up with y squared over a squared minus c squared. Let's just see what it does. Okay, it does what I wanted it to. But I know that a is less than c, which means that a squared minus c squared is actually a negative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up here. I'm gonna change this into, well, I'm gonna change this. Hold on, let's do this. I'm gonna do the negative of c squared minus a squared. So now I'm just doing things to explain to you guys while you're watching. Like I wouldn't really do this on the calculator. Factor a negative out of both of those. And now c squared minus a squared is a positive number, which is good because I probably want that to happen. I know I want that to happen. I'm gonna press enter. It's probably just gonna distribute again, uh, which it does. But if we go back up to this, what I'd rather do is take this negative sign that's in here and just factor it out and put it there. And I get x squared over a squared minus y squared over hmm, c squared minus a squared is equal to one. If we go back to our equation, that's not what the equation looked like. It was x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is one. So what we actually do at this point is, um, I'm gonna press enter, kind of messes it up again. Uh, I'm just gonna let b squared equal c squared minus a squared. And by doing that, if I go back up here to my equation and I make the substitution, so this is all very non-CAS at this point, it's just that I'm not handwriting anything. I do this, press enter, by making that substitution, I've gotten to the equation that I wanted. So I have this. And also, if you look at the relationship we came up with, b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. If I add a squared to both sides, I get that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we also just figured out why c squared is a squared plus b squared. All right, so um, that's how we can derive the equation. If you derive the equation of an ellipse, it's exactly the same process until the very end. Uh, well, actually, I guess the initial step is different, right? Because we have to do d1 minus d2 instead of d1 plus d2. So that's different. And then at the end, we have to make that weird factoring step, right? Where we know that a is actually less than c. Um, so we factored out a negative from uh, this a squared minus c squared and kind of went from there. So it's a little less clear than the ellipse description, uh, but it definitely works. And you can see, let me delete this for some clarity here, that we get x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to one. And when that's true, we know that a squared plus c, uh, nope, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So there you go. Um, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.